Britney Spears was locked in a decades-long conservatorship. Why wasn't she in a guardianship? What's the difference between a conservatorship and a guardianship anyway? Hello everyone, I'm attorney Carl D. Shehu, the founder and managing member of Shehu Legal based out of Middlebury, Connecticut. And today we're gonna to answer an important question and that's the difference between a conservatorship and a guardianship. What's the difference anyway? At the core, a guardianship and a conservatorship are very similar legal structures. In fact, laymen often use the terms interchangeably. Others, I mean, both of these institutions are methods of managing the affairs of a protected person. Who's a protected person? A protected person is someone who is judged by a court to be unable to manage his property, his affairs, or to provide for his own needs. In Connecticut, for both guardianships and conservatorships, the probate court has jurisdiction. So the probate court has the right to determine who has title to property, who has the right to use property, who has the right to possess property. And that's true for both real estate and personal property. While a guardianship and a conservatorship might be similar in many ways, there are some important differences. For one, a conservatorship is the preferred legal structure for a person who is over 18, whereas a guardianship is typically used for a minor or in Connecticut for a developmentally disabled adult. So when we talk about guardianships, we're really talking about a relationship between a guardian, the person who is appointed to provide for or care for another person, a third party, and that person is known as the ward. There are two types of guardian-ward relationships. There's a guardianship of the person and there's a guardianship of the estate. In a guardianship of the person, the guardian is providing for the day-to-day -day needs of the ward. When we're talking about the case of a minor child, a guardianship of the person is a relationship in which the guardian is acting in the place of the parents. Why would a person need a guardian in lieu of parents? Well, there are a few different reasons. It can be because the parents have passed away. It can be because of a termination of parental rights. It can be because the um, a court determined that a parent was unable to care for the ward, the minor child. So in the case of a minor, a guardian of the person is charged with caring for and controlling the minor child, providing for the welfare of the minor child, including medical care. And in the case of the death of the ward, the minor, the guardian would have responsibility for making funeral arrangements as well. When we look at a guardianship of the person, of a person with intellectual disabilities, we're actually talking about an extension of parental rights beyond the age of 18, the age of majority. So this might occur because the minor had um, an injury from birth that made him unable to care for himself. And so it's clear at the age of 18 that um, an extended guardianship is going to be necessary, or perhaps the minor incurred a traumatic brain injury during his childhood, and that rendered him unable to care for himself. In both of those scenarios, a guardianship of the person for a person with intellectual disabilities is appropriate. Courts do scrutinize guardianships for persons with intellectual disabilities because we're dealing with a person over the age of 18. And there's a presumption that that person is able to care for himself. 
So the intellectual disability must be severe. And that means that the ward is unable to meet essential requirements regarding his health and his safety. In addition to a guardianship of the person, there's a second type of guardianship, and that's a guardianship of the estate. A guardian of the estate is entrusted with managing the financial aspects of a ward. So for a minor, a guardian of the estate is necessary if the minor has assets above $10,000. And that's true even if the minor has parents and the parents have custody of the child. Prior to 2018, there was no mechanism in place in the state of Connecticut for a guardianship of the estate for a person with intellectual disabilities. But there was a law change in 2018, and now the appointed guardian of the person for a person with intellectual disabilities has the right to seek permission from the probate court to manage the financial affairs of the disabled individual. However, there's an important cap here. In order for this to happen, the person with intellectual disabilities must have less than $10,000. And once or if that individual ever accumulates assets above $10,000, there's an automatic termination of the guardianship of the estate. And so then that person must then petition the probate court for a conservatorship. Let's get into what a conservatorship is. In Connecticut, a conservatorship is the preferred vehicle for managing the affairs of a person above the age of 18. And because a person is above the age of 18, he's entitled to due process rights in Connecticut. Because essentially, when you petition the probate court to place a person in a conservatorship, you're asking that court to strip fundamental constitutional rights from that individual. Like a guardianship, there are two types of conservatorships. There's a conservatorship of the person and a conservatorship of the estate. And when a probate court appoints a conservator of the person, it seeks to give that person the greatest amount of independence and self-determination. And so the conservator must use the least restrictive means possible of intervening in the life of the conserved person. And the court, when it fashions the conservatorship order, it typically outlines where the conservator has the ability to intervene. So it's going to be specific and limited areas of the conserved person's life. So what areas would a conservator of the person typically have authority um, to manage in a conserved person's life? Well, there are a few different ones. They can establish a residence for the conserved person, manage his personal property, consent to medical care, and just generally provide for the care and comfort of the conserved person. A conservator of the estate, similar to a guardian of the estate, is tasked with managing the financial aspects of the conserved person's life. So as you can see, there are some important differences between a conservatorship and a guardianship. In Connecticut, a guardianship is primarily for a minor or a person with intellectual disabilities stemming from his minority, and a conservator is for an adult. I hope that clears up any confusion. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm Carl D. Shehu. Memento Mori. Take care and God bless.